many thanks for staying with us and joining us as well. Welcome to our studios this morning. It's the Breakfast Independence Special. And uh, shortly we just listened to the president's speech, but uh, we, we just head straight to the conversation uh, right here. We're looking at the state of the nation now, and we still have our guest with us, Adebayo Luwake, who is the Director and Principal Research Fellow, African Resource Development Center. Now, one would want to believe that in spite of anti crime innovation of the 21st century, crime and criminality have been on the increase. I mean, we would think that we should be making some progress. And let's not also forget that uh, 2015, especially with this administration, uh, this administration was big on ending insecurity in Nigeria, but that's not the case. Uh, let's turn our attention to our guests now. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Bayo Uluwaki. Thanks for having me. All right, then. Uh, so I think we'll start off with uh, on the premise of the president's speech, continuation. And uh, do you think that uh, what the president said and our current reality, uh, is there, you know, some correlation with the thoughts of the president and what we're facing right now? To a certain degree, yes. You see, the, the, the security problems um, in the country... Um, have become complicated. Um, and I think as a result of several factors. Uh, but let's first look at what was done, you know, up till now. Um, I mean, at the top of the program, when we spoke immediately after the president's um, uh, broadcast, um, my other colleague said we've had security problems for a long time. Uh, if we go back just briefly in history, we've often had what we call riots in Nigeria. But if you really analyze some of these so-called riots, they were not actually riots. They were some sort of in insurgent activity, even though they were limited. If you've heard of Metatsine riots, for example, and a couple of others, and if you consider the fact that we needed to deploy the army and to some extent, during, in, in quelling the Maitatsine riots, we actually had to deploy the Air Force in Kano to actually quell that. And if you also remember that at the onset of the Boko Haram uh, insurgency in Meiduguri, we also had to deploy the army. You know, when Mohammed Yusuf was the founder of Boko Haram, was captured by the army and handed over to the police. So what does that tell us? Nigeria is a country that consistently has been inundated by violence. And um, the, 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 the problem was, for example, that we now ended up with an insurgency. Before we were having pockets of violence, they could become really intense over a specific period and they are quelled. But with the Boko Haram insurgency from the Northeast, we ended up with actually an insurgency which many people in this country never thought would happen. Okay? And um, the responses of both, in my opinion, state and federal governments at the inception of this crisis was actually what resulted in the protracted uh, uh, nature of the crisis that we finally had. But what has this administration done about that? Um, there were talks about the kind of resources that the security forces needed to, to, to fight, to, 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 to neutralize the threat. We had a security force, especially the armed forces, trained essentially to do conventional warfare. And then now we were faced with an insurgency, which is much more difficult to deal with, uh, complicated by the kind of borders we had, and we, sorry, we have, especially in the north. The borders are just open. You're going from Niger into Nigeria, from Ni Chad into Nigeria, the mountainous region for, with Cameroon in the east, and so on. So these are some of the complications. But then this administration premised its manifesto on dealing with those problems. And I think that um, while the insurgency has reasonably been brought under control, we have had other threats open up. Terrorism, banditry, you know, going well beyond the epicenter of the Boko Haram insurgency, which was the northeast, okay? The central part of Nigeria, which is a food basket, as we all know, became very much affected. And then even the southern parts, 
have also been affected. Uh, and um, we have, so while we have been able to significantly degrade Boko Haram or Iswap and actually push them to the fringes of the Lake Chad, okay, we have not been able to deal with the other threats that have emerged. And everybody knows that. Banditry, kidnapping, and so on and so forth, terrorism. And I feel that this is the scenario because we have been using the military to do tasks that are meant for the police. We have also been using the military to carry out tasks that are meant for the domestic intelligence service. And therefore, the military has become overstretched. And if we do not correct the problem arising from deploying the military for policing duties, I don't think we are going to get out of the security problems for a while. So just another one. Uh, some people have said, and from history, uh, some people say that the current security concerns that we're faced with can be traced back to 1970, shortly after the Civil War. It was also reported that there were a lot of arms that was imported into this country. And after the Civil War, you know, people lost their businesses. It was a lot, and there was need to recover the economy. And so arms actually fell into the hands of people who are not, I mean, jobless people, a lot of people. And uh, a lot of people believe, and history has also stated that that was when, you know, arm robbery became on the high. Uh, that's where it started. In our institutions back then, uh, in the 70s, 1970s, you had uh, the tertiary institution characterized by cult activities when the military also was also in power. People needed to protect themselves. And so you had in schools, kidnapping, robbery, what have you, that can also be, you know, uh, compared to terrorism, right, and that's going on. I mean, all of that rape and what have you, assassination, mother arson, these things actually happened from that time. So I, I'd like to, you know, share your thoughts. Do you agree that with this school of thoughts and with history, we had armed robbery after the Civil War. We never had armed robbery in Nigeria before the Civil War, you know. Um, but armed robbery surfaced after. That's a fact. But not the degree. I, I wouldn't agree that, you know, the degree. Uh, because if you look at what we had, and if you compare us to many other countries, especially African countries that suffered armed conflict, the, Niger the, the unfortunate uh, Nigerian Civil War, um, in terms of weapons management and in the aftermath of that conflict, I think was reasonably well managed, you know, because you had two, milit you had two forces that fought a conventional battle, right? The, the Nigerian Armed Forces, the Biafran Armed Forces. It's not like what we have now, where you essentially have armed opposition groups taking on state uh, organized armed forces. And as a result of the fact that two conventional forces fought, and uh, you had the process, one of them the war, the war came to an end. Uh, and yes, some weapons, there was some proliferation of weapons, but not to the magnitude, you know, between 1970 and, uh, you know, late 90s when we started having, sorry, early 20s when we started having Boko Haram. The gap was too much, you know. But we have had situations where weapons entered our territory because our borders are not properly policed, you know. And I would think that the proliferation of weapons actually came as a result of our porous borders. But more recently, I believe that we have had a worsening of that weapons proliferation because of the conflict in Libya, which deposed uh, former President Muammar Gaddafi. You know, and uh, the fact that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries actually um, overwhelmed Libya with all kinds of weapons. You know, which, I mean, we've even seen documentaries about weapons, people selling weapons in Libya. You know, you name it, any kind of weapon. And also from the, from the reports we have seen, some of the weapons that have been captured from Boko Haram have come from Libya. You know, so I think that the worsening state of security in the Sahel and the porous borders that we have had and the free movement of persons protocol of the economic community of West African states have combined to exacerbate the weapons proliferation in Nigeria, you know, um, and uh, I mean, the authorities just have to 
to significantly try to deal with those, those challenges. All right. Uh, uh, interesting. Um, some of the, the, the solutions that will, you, you'll be you know, unra un unraveling tonight, uh, today rather, shall it also be probably something that the next administration can look into. Probably it's, uh, it's uh, already a lost cause you know, for this administration. <laughs> I don't know if you say that. But uh, one of the things the president mentioned in his speech, and uh, it's, uh, it's further for us uh, at this point, is uh, he said in order to address the insecurity uh, uh, we worked methodolic, method, 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 methodically rather, uh, in reducing insurgency in the Northeast, militancy in the Niger Delta, ethnic and religious tensions in some parts of Nigeria, along with other problems threatening uh, our country. So he mentioned Northeast, though we know that there's a situation already in the Northwest that is now uh, yeah. far worse than what is in the Northeast. Uh, he didn't really mention the Southeast, but we know the situation there. Even recently, it's become worse. Um, what, what what are your thoughts on, on the method? Because he said they worked methodically. What I remember is that he said that uh, the IGP should relocate to the Northeast, and the IGP didn't relocate. And the president <laughs> said he wasn't aware. <laughs> or that the politicians say he wasn't aware. So, um, the method. Uh, are, you, are you in support of uh, a gong-ho you know, style security uh, approach to this? Or are you... Uh, in support of a, a sort of a combined with a, a, a political solution to all of these. You see what Yaradwa did in Niger Delta and said, you know what, we would give an amnesty program, which was, which, which was you know, very black magic, ended the insurgency in the South, uh, Niger Delta. So what are your thoughts on that? Because the president also went to say that um, as we continue to de-escalate the security challenges that confronted us at the inception of this administration, uh, new forms alien to our country began to manifest, especially in the areas of kidnappings, you know, molestation and killings, innocent citizens of innocent citizens, banditry, all of which are being addressed by our security forces. Is it just a security problem? Do we have also the need for political solution to all of these? It's a, is it not a double barrel question, it's a triple barrel question. Um, I think, for me, actually, it's always the, the, the apparatus that we have and we are deploying and how these apparatus are operating uh, in synergy, okay? Um, first of all, the, I mentioned the um, let's 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 take the armed forces. I uh, I, I'm, I feel very strongly about this because I think it's something that hasn't been particularly discussed in the public space. It is not the job of the armed forces to do some of the things it is being asked to do. We just have to accept that. Which is is it the police? Yeah, maybe it is the police and the DSS. Okay? okay, the architecture of Nigeria says domestic threats, terrorism, and all. It is the DSS. Department of State Services, which used to be the National Security Organization, metamorphosed into the State Security Service, and is now the Department of State Services. Now, the question is, have we equipped the DSS sufficiently to be able to carry out those tasks? Okay, because the paradigm has shifted from what was, you know, the kind of threat perception that we had. And, but have we actually positioned the DSS? Have we trained the DSS? Have we hired as many people as would be required? Because the DSS is, a, is an intelligence service. Its modus operandi and all of that are not for public consumption. So, and we can only analyze based on what we get in open sources. So it's difficult, but, but what, I can, what I feel, okay, from what I read, from what I try to analyze, is that the kind of support that has been given to the armed forces, I have not seen, and I may be wrong, I have not seen this kind of support being provided to the DSS, whose primary responsibility it is to stem domestic threats to Nigeria. Now, allied to what the DSS is supposed to be doing is the police. And if you look at the units of the police, take the police mobile force, which people call riot police or whatever, the, the, the police mobile force was established in the First Republic by Prime Minister Tafar Balewa when he visited Malaysia and he was impressed when he saw the paramilitary police that they had. And this was introduced to Nigeria. But the police mobile force in Nigeria was prepared to respond to the kind of riotous behavior you would find from communities or students. Tell me today 
the scenario has changed. Have we prepared the police mobile force to be able to respond to the threats today? That's a question, and I may not be able to answer it, but I feel it's a strong question because there was a recent example during the NSARS when criminals hijacked the, the, the process. I did not see police mobile force anywhere. Maybe I'm wrong again. Let's come to the police air wing. The Nigeria police has an air wing. They have fixed wing aircraft. They have rotary wing aircraft. Do we see the Nigeria police air wing in the sky? Do we see police platforms in the sky? Kuje prison was, was attacked. People were talking about the army. It is not the job of the army to protect prisons. Did we see a police helicopter in the sky? If we didn't see police helicopters in the sky, what is the problem? Have we equipped the police enough for the police to be able to put its aircraft in the sky? We were asking the Air Force to patrol Abuja Kaduna Rail. The Air Force is a combat service. When we have a police air wing, why should the Air Force be asked to patrol Abuja Kaduna Rail? So, we probably have not equipped our police air wing. Okay? Now, you have the police railway command. You see the twin question, first asking Air Force to patrol when we have a police air wing. And like I said, which presupposes, and I may be wrong, because I'm only analyzing from open sources, which could presuppose that our police air wing is not, has not been equipped to do what it's supposed to do. Now, we have spent billions building a brand new rail system, and we are still expanding that rail network. We've always had a Nigeria Police Railway Command with headquarters at uh, Ebutemeta, right? We don't, where are they? With all the brand new rail systems we have on the ground, have we revitalized the Nigerian Police Railway Command? Have we retrained Nigeria Police Railway Command? Have we equipped it to the point where it can protect the billions of rail infrastructure we are putting down? I don't see these conversations in the public space. Take the police maintenance depart division. The police has a maintenance division, right? If you are beginning to deploy drones, which probably will happen, I, I, I can suspect that the police, they are probably thinking of all of this. Uh, if you're going to be deploying drones, if you're going to be deploying CCTV cameras, who are the guys in the police who are supposed to maintain them? It is the police maintenance division. What is the state of the police maintenance division today? So when people criticize the police as not performing, and we want to set up state police, and by the way, I support state police, but if we do not understand why the police is not performing optimally, even the state police will not work because it is the same environment, it is the same values we have, okay? And if we do not address the systemic issues, infrastructural issues, operational issues, issues of the value system of the Nigerian, because these people who are going to be hired, they are Nigerians, then we will not have an improvement. So oh. just to, to close up on this, you cannot use the armed forces you can use the armed forces to support civil authority, and our constitution allows for that. And actually, in many situations, we have been deploying the armed forces to support civil authority. But it's supposed to be specific, time-bound, okay? And then they go back to their normal functions of protecting the territorial integrity. Because you train soldiers to kill people, unfortunately, as that sounds. That's why we keep them in the barracks, so that we can account for them at any point in time, because they have to defend this country. And in the process of defending this country, they may have to kill, right? So you don't deploy soldiers to stop riots. You deploy the police. You deploy the paramilitary police. But to what extent have we retrained, re-equipped, funded, motivated the Nigeria police force wow. to be able to... If we don't do that, we will keep using the military and the military will be overstretched. Well, uh, uh, interesting thoughts there. We, we have to co go, but I uh, wish we had more time, you know, to talk but, about but, but this. I, but know. I'm just thinking that, I mean, yeah. really, uh, Kofi, I know that we have to go. But yeah, we're, we're out of time. Yes, we're out of time. But just quickly, because he has mentioned all of this, the issue of training, retraining, and funding 
all of this is about financing. And let's stay with this administration, not going back to 1960 because we're here. In, in the past seven budget cycles under the president, Buhari, uh, it's, it's reported that 12 trillion naira has been allocated to the security sector. That's based on analysis. And I'm saying it's 12 trillion naira, not enough. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, the budget in an allocation, security seems to take a chunk of the budget. That's would that true. not be enough, you know, to cater for all of these issues? That's true, but it's debatable. You know why I say it's debatable? A budget is a statement of intent. And you may budget and not actually give all the amount you've budgeted. That's why the National Assembly is there, to carry out its oversight functions, to make sure that whatever funds have been allocated have been properly utilized. But one of the things that I can say in terms of how the order, what we call the order of battle of the Nigerian Armed Forces, you know, the order of battle has changed. There's absolutely no argument about that. You can see platforms that have been acquired. You know, you, I mean, for example, the, 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 the Air Force got the Super Tucano aircraft, which... Okay, people like to call them jet, but they are turboprop aircraft. They are not jet aircraft. But they have precision weapons. They can help us improve uh, the security situation. They can do pinpoint targeting and all those kinds of things. The, the, uh, the, the army has also been equipped with <coughs> excuse me, several <coughs> uh, infantry fighting vehicles, mine, mine resistance vehicles to protect the troops and so on and so forth. That has happened with the armed forces, you know. But the question is, the police. You see, because if you capture a territory, you have to hold it. If you capture a territory, the, sw the swathe of land in the northeast and in the north that the, um, the military has deployed into, you don't just chase people out. You have to leave troops there to, to keep the place secure. Okay? And if we had police units, well-trained, well-prepared, they can close those gaps you know, while allowing the military to do more. So for me, it is not really equipment for the armed forces. It is equipment, motivation, training for the police and the DSS. Well, this, I think, should be the focus, especially for this administration. It still has some months to go. If this administration can focus on the police and the DSS, equip them properly, train them properly, recruit more. We have 150,000 police officers doing VIP protection duty. All right. So and some of them need, are mobile need, police. We officers. need to hire people to replace these guys. All right. Thank, thank you very much for, for that. Uh, we would certainly love to have you back. Um, uh, Mr. Debayo Lo Ake is a director and principal research fellow at African uh, Resource Development Center. It's still the Independence Day special right here on Plus TV Africa. We'll be right back. And up next, we'll look at the state of the Nigerian economy with Professor Ndubusi Nwokoma. Please stay with us.